Stockholm, Sweden. We traveled overnight with Viking Line from Helsinki to Stockholm. It was so cool to enter Stockholm by water and a great birthday experience for Elliot. It looks like this guy is fighting a giant crustacean and honestly, it looks delicious. Like I want butter with that thing. Thursdays in Sweden mean soup and pancake day. We wanted the boys to experience this tradition so we headed to Underkastanen. So traditionally it's a pea soup, but this restaurant had a really great spinach soup. How do you feel about your birthday lunch? The pancakes were amazing with the cream and strawberry jam. Mwah. Why are pancakes and soups synonymous with each other in Sweden? And why on Thursdays? The origins are said to date back to the 15th century when Sweden was a Catholic country. And on Fridays they would fast, so on Thursdays they would eat a ton. And what are two of the least expensive things to prepare in large quantities? Soup and pancakes. Pancakes and soup. Pancakes and soup. It's pancake time. This iron bridge we went across was the first one ever forged in Sweden. The bridge was made in 1861, and the crowns on it represent not just the Swedish royal family, but they're a symbol of Sweden itself. We had friends who lived in Sweden, and when Matt and I came a few years ago, they brought us to this bridge to see the golden crowns and this gorgeous view of Stockholm. Yeah, you got a cross on your face. Cross on the face. Where? What? What do you mean? Still there. What's that supposed to mean? What did you mean a cross on my face? There's a cross on your face. <laughs> on our last visit to Sweden, Matt and I were shown around the city by our friends Phil and Katya. It's so fun to go back to some of these places with the boys and to discover new parts of the city together. So right now we're heading over to the Stockholm Medieval Museum and one of the things that I really love about it is it's free. Yeah, I'm really excited to go to the Medieval Museum. I really like medieval stuff because of the battles and fighting and it's really fun to learn about. I want these as toys. It's not all the way evil, just medieval. The medieval museum was really cool. It was interesting, it's easy to navigate through, and it has a lot of points of interest. This is the graveyard. You can see the old city wall, which is pretty cool. There was a cool exhibit of fairy tales. And we got to ride on a dragon. Even though admission is free, there's so much detail and richness in each exhibit. Naked but ready for battle. Naked, just a helmet on. Ready for battle! <laughs> After the museum, I was super hungry and I was ready for my birthday dinner. For Elliot's birthday, we gave him a choice of what he wanted to eat. He was thinking burgers or maybe pizza, so we settled on burgers, did a search, and we ended up finding Burgers and Fuel, which is an old town. They have a couple burgers they call the Wild Burgers, and one of them is Moose. So we got one of those to share, and it was pretty good. And I got some Swedish meatballs, lingonberries, and potatoes. I loved going there for my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, the boys loved the food. <laughs> This is Stockholm's narrowest street, which is pretty narrow. I don't know what this is. I kind of wish they had a bigger doorknob. 
My friend Katya recommended the Vasa Museum and I'm so glad she did. It was incredible. It's so huge. It's real. Wait, it's real? Yeah, it's real. It's real. Like, is it a copy of a real thing? No, I think it's the real thing. Doesn't it remind you of Pirates of the Caribbean? I love the part where they say, bootstraps, bootstraps, and then I get stuck in my head like all day. I've been to quite a few places in the world. The Vasa Museum is right up there in the top because it's so incredible to see that ship. The funny thing is that it only actually sailed for 20 minutes before it sank because of bad design. Even though it sank, the Vasa is now actually considered a success because where it sank kept it so well preserved. 98% of the ship is original. They started the salvage process in 1957. It took until 1961 to get it up. If the wood dries out, it cracks and breaks. So what they had to do was keep water running over it the whole time and then for like 17 years they had some sort of preservative running over the wood filling in the spaces where the water used to be it's weird and i don't know how to explain it but it's something that i could probably just stare at all day like, i don't know it's just cool i'm geeking out Yeah, they said it's about 70 meters long, so it's a little shorter than a football field. From, from like that thing, apparently, then Tom Brady's just gonna go. If you have time and you're in Stockholm, Sweden, check out Vasa. In our search to find Sweden's traditional Tunbrads Rula, we discovered the popular local favorite, Bruno's, instead. We know it's not the same as the traditional Swedish street food, but we were led by the reviews. It was still really good. In our events, we did have every intention of getting the traditional Tunbrads Rula. However, we did get a little distracted when we saw the great reviews that the locals had left for Bruno's. The people working were so helpful and nice, and they even let me film them preparing the Food. And what did you order? Uh, hot dog with ketchup. Nice. Same thing, baby. A double Jaeger wurst with German bratwurst. So one is like um, a meatloaf meat, and one is like a sausage meat. Normally we don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> That's a reverence I don't get because I've never seen that movie. When we travel, we always try to eat the traditional foods, but we don't limit ourselves to that either. We like to branch out and eat the things that the locals recommend. That is so satisfying, especially on a chilly day. This is so good. <laughs> With Bruno's, we had no regrets. Bruno's was really good. I liked it a lot. We're going to Mojang to see the outside. We're outside of Mojang Studios. Just thought we'd swing by and take a peek. For those of you who are not in the know, they make the makers of Minecraft, right? Yes. We didn't think we'd be able to go inside, but they let us in to see the lobby. Honestly, guys, I am geeking out. I started to play this game with the boys just to kind of, I don't know, have the same interests and stuff like that. And I got a little bit addicted. So you can find me in creative mode. And I love building things. It is so fun. Check out my world. I just think it's cool that all these places, the hospitality of even just having a lobby experience for visitors is pretty cool. It was so cool. This for us was also a must. We had to. We're in Ikea. Can't help it. We're finally in an Ikea store. Yes, yes we are. Where the product names make sense. Yes, yes, that's correct. To those who shop here. Yes, yes, that is also correct. Oh.
If we can, we like to stay in the heart of a city, kind of like we did in Copenhagen and Tallinn and Helsinki, but that can sometimes be challenging on a budget. Luckily, we found a fun, comfortable, and charming hotel only 20 minutes from the city center. The advantage of the hotel that Jill found was that it was right along a bus route, and upon returning, it was just a short walk over the highway. On our last day, we hopped on the bus and headed downtown to the Royal Palace. You can buy tickets online at the gift shop or at any of the entrances. There are some parts of the palace open in the summer that aren't open in the winter. We got to go down to a dark, creepy cellar in the Royal Palace. Not to see prisons or anything, but to see Sweden's royal symbols, treasures, and even a few weapons. All of the robes, weapons, and crowns reminded me of Narnia. We also got to tour the Royal Apartments, and I've lived in apartments before, but not quite like this. Hi. It's the last day. Jill, what did we learn in Copenhagen? To get in line early for the changing of the guards. So we're not newbies anymore. We knew. The old us, the Denmark us, we'd still be touring around and being like, we have 20 minutes till the changing of the guards. Not this family, not again. We had a front row view of the changing of the guards, which was really great, except that the wind was coming right at us and it was so cold. The people behind us were probably glad we were there. The final stop for us on our palace exploration was the Three Crowns Museum. This museum may have been smaller and a shorter visit than the others, but had fantastic atmosphere and details. Plus there was a lot of great information packed in here. Here, we learned about the 1697 Stockholm Castle Fire and the subsequent punishment of the fire watchers who had shirked their duty. Making it clear to us what running the gauntlet really means. I did not expect this. He was so small. Though he's small, the boy watching the moon evokes big emotion. The sculptor did an amazing job creating a piece of art, both dreamy and vulnerable. The world around him seems so vast. Okay, I don't know if I pronounce this right, but the Vietikatum is where we're at. Uh, and we're here for Fika. Where Jill and I came to Sweden in 2016 and uh, kind of adopted Fika, which is like kind of like this afternoon, three o'clock-ish kind of time when people pause for coffee, tea, and treats. And uh, so we're here enjoying some fika of our own, and it is packed. This is so good. The first time I ever had a semla was here in Sweden, and it's one of my absolute favorites. But if you have a nut allergy, there is a little bit of almond in this, just to be aware. This is yet another great recommendation from Katya. She said this place is worth a visit, and she was spot on. Thanks, Katya. It's so good. Matt found this great restaurant called Mom's Kitchen. We couldn't have picked a better place to go for our last meal in Sweden. It's a great place where you can eat in the restaurant or get takeaway and you can bring the food home to heat up. It, the meatballs were so good. This place is a little unconventional, but really, really good. <laughs> so 
So we've come to the end of our three week journey. I really enjoyed Stockholm. My final thoughts on Sweden are, it's amazing, I would actually come back just for their meatballs. I can't wait to go back sometime and see the rest of Sweden. If you have the chance to go there, go there. Winter travel in Europe ended up being so <laughs> fun. Don't be afraid to dress warm and get out there. Thanks for coming along with us. We hope you enjoy these videos. Thanks for watching. And just make sure to subscribe. Click that bell thingy ding dong. And we'll see you next time. What the heck? <laughs> yeah. That's actually pretty impressive that they did that.